Here's what happened. Paul showed it to me, and then Gerald was walking by, and he saw it, and he goes, Oh, let me put that up there. I said, No, I don't I probably don't need to do that. I'm going I'm to I'm just get right in the message because I do want to have time to pray, if that's okay. Um, let's pray. Father, we love you, Lord. God, thank you that we can smile. Thank you, Lord, that you're. You're just so good to us, God. We can have a good time, Lord. I hope that that was okay. I hope we didn't embarrass anybody too much. And, uh, Lord, I hope that we can uh, really get something out of this message tonight. Father, I need you. We need you. We need something from the Word of God more than we need anything else, Lord. So please bless the preaching and teaching of your Word. In Jesus' name, amen. Matthew chapter number 9. No, we're going to read the scripture. I just wanted to pray. All right, Matthew chapter number 9, verse number 35. Matthew chapter 9, verse number 35, the Bible says, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Notice every sickness, every disease. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them. Because they fainted and they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth the laborers into his harvest. Let's pray and we'll get right into it and preach this message tonight. Is his mission, my mission. Is his mission, my mission. Father, we love you. Lord, I do pray that you bless the preaching right now. God, give us uh, into our hearts, Lord, into our minds. Help us to just hear what the Word of God has. May it affect our prayer life tonight, Lord. May it affect our lives forever. May you give us something that only you can do. Move me out of the way, Lord. Hide me behind the cross. And I pray that you would get honor and glory for what's said and done. Lord, please help us in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. Let me say this. When I, when I said it, it's his mission, my mission. The mission of Jesus Christ was to come and have compassion on the world, and to reach the world. He was here to express God's compassion. He, he loved them, for God so loved the world. And, and the Bible says when He saw the multitudes, he, was, he, 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 uh, he saw those people following Him. He saw those people needing something. He saw the people in the villages and the cities and the, the countrysides and the synagogues and the, the mountains and the seashores and the boats and, 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 and he saw them in the homes. And the Bible says he was moved with compassion when he saw that. Now I want to understand what's going on. The Bible says in verse 35 that he healed every sickness and every disease. Now, Jesus was all man, but he was all God at the same time. And he went through things like we would go through things, the Bible said. And he got tired, and he got hungry, and he got uh, discouraged at times, and, and different things, but without sin. And so as he's going around healing all these people, every disease, every sickness, I want to tell you, he was probably a little bit tired. Uh, he didn't have a place to lay his head. He would often eat with people that would invite him to eat. And we never hear about Jesus complaining or, or upset about that. And he was tired and he had a busy, busy life. And they didn't have cars. They didn't have air conditioners. They didn't, the houses were not closed houses like we have. I mean, it was tough. But the Bible says when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. All the while been working and, and doing his everyday deal, walking and, and ministering and, and helping. And, and listen to me, I'm going to tell you this. Ministering to people takes a lot out of a person. 
It, it, it really uh, drains a person. And it's important for your preacher and for, for others that are ministers to, to get spiritually fed and to take care of themselves because it really is draining helping people sometimes. And Jesus was wore out. I, I just know he was. He was tired and, and, and he'd been busy. And, and, and when it said every disease and every sickness, I've never seen that before until I read that tonight. And I've read through this a lot today and this week. And I thought, man, every one, he healed every single person. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion. He was moved over their physical needs, them being hungry. And, and then being uh, in pain and suffering. He was moved over their spiritual needs. They're walking around. They've got nobody to leave them. Uh, uh, they're lost and they're, they're dying and they're going to hell. They're, they're empty and they're lonely. I mean, that guy in the corner, he was empty and he was lonely. I knew that. They have no purpose and no meaning and no significance in their life. I mean, Jesus seeing all these people, all he can think of is they're all lost. When's the last time you were around a group of people and all you could think about was they're all lost and they all need help? And he saw them all and observed them and studied them. And, and listen, nobody ever escaped Jesus' mind. And he saw some things, and I want to just give them to you very quickly because I want to have time to pray. But I'm telling you this, folks. God has no hands but your hands. He has no feet but your feet. He has no eyes uh, you know, like a human like we can see but ours and ears like ours. And, and he wants to do something with us. And what we need to pray about tonight is that we would see people like Jesus sees people. Amen. Lost and undone. This whole thing of being saved and not ever trying to tell anybody about it, man, that's, that's wicked. Yeah, and that's selfish. And, and that's called not caring about nobody but yourself. And, and there are people in here that are like that. And I'm not mad at you. I'm just trying to preach to you tonight let you see some things, man. It's important that we get after this. And that we're moved with compassion. And not mad and angered at them and upset because they're not like us or something like that. Jesus saw three things, and they're very simple things. He saw people fainting. He saw the crowds fainting. They were weighed down. They were they were being uh, uh, life weighed them down. It was cruel. They they didn't, they weren't healthy. They were empty. They had no purpose. And folks, I'm telling you, everybody you know that doesn't that does not know the Lord has no purpose in their life. That's right. And as we grow as Christians, we realize a lot of us in this room have realized our purpose really is Christianity. Yeah, amen. It is not our job. It is not the nine to five. It is God. As we grow as Christians, we ought to see that. And we've got people sitting in churches that have been long enough in the church that are still putting everything they got into the, the J-O-B and nothing into God's work. And let me tell you, that's that's wrong. And, and it's not going to, it's not, God's not for that. And, and listen to me, Joe Osteen ain't going to tell you that on Sunday. And neither is all the rest of them her, 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 heretics. I mean, this is real deal Christianity, man. God was, was teaching those guys. And the Bible says when he saw, Matthew was writing this, and he said, man, when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. And I remember being there and, and seeing we were walking with Jesus. And, and man, when, and he was healing people here, and, and he was tired, man. We were looking for something to eat. We were looking to sit down for the night and relax. And, 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 and then all of a sudden, they just came over the landscape, over the top of that hill, and, and there were thousands of them. And, and all I could think of was, oh, my goodness. When I'm thinking about Matthew, what he might have been thinking. More? I mean, we've been at it all day, and all they do is they need more and more and more. And they are just, I'm tired. And Jesus looked around and said, Guys, you see all this? This is why we're here. 
But Paul, you know why we live here, Brother Paul? We live here so we can be closer to this building. Man, we live here because we're their only hope. Amen. Carlos, you're the only hope for that street you live on. The only hope. That street is messed up. And, 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 and Jesus, when he came across the top of that mountain with Matthew, and I, remember, I imagine Matthew was like, what in the world? All right, now what's he going to do? Jesus looked around and said, "When he, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. He couldn't believe it. He just, he wasn't, he was tired. But when he saw them, he said, you know what? They need help. They were fainting, the Bible says. They, they, because they fainted, that means they, they were falling down. The multitudes were tired too. They were, they were ready to give up. There was thousands around and they wanted to get to them and they couldn't get to them. And they were they just were out of strength and, and out of help. And man, that little guy that was sitting on the steps out there, man, he was just out of strength and out of help. And, and he's fainting. And when I walked up, I thought, man, I gotta get him off that porch. I don't like him sitting over here in that church. But by the time I got to him, I thought, man, thank God he put him right here. I'm just gonna talk to him a little bit. And and, and listen. Remember when you fainted? I know we got some kids in here that don't ever remember fainting. They don't remember how life was before they got saved. Now, thank God my kids don't know what I went through. And I hope they never have to go through what I went through. And I don't ever want to glorify it. But young people ain't no cool people in here live that life. It ain't wasn't fun. And nobody wants to go back. Amen. And you might not make it if you go into it. I, I grew up doing that. You didn't. You'll be swallowed up. And God says, man, they're fainting. Religion weighed them down. Let's say this, and I'm moving as quick as possible. Religion weighed them down, burden after burden. Do this. Do that. Because the Jews were a religious crowd. They're trying to make it. The Pharisees added to the law, and the Sadducees took away from the law. The Pharisees says, you've got to do more than what the Bible says. The Sadducees said, well, you don't have to do all that. We have those today. Yeah. And, and they were after them and laid burdens on them and endless rituals and religion mis misled most of them. And, and they were they were just tired. And, and listen to me, you, you think about it. The billions of Hindus that got no peace tonight. The billions of Muslims that have no peace tonight. And then I'll go to bed and sleep like a baby. Because God gives me sweet sleep, the Bible says. Amen. And and man, I've got you know, I mean, I've, I've got a lot on my plate, and I've got a lot to think about, and more than I've ever had to think about my whole life. But it just seems like it's easy with Him. And these people are fainting out there, man. And God, listen, listen to me now. We're we're almost done here. I want you to listen to this. God did not save you to sit you. He didn't. And he wants you to. He wants you to see the multitude. David came in tonight and said, "But well, Paul, though we weren't going soul winning, and and and, 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 and you know, and David was like, oh, we, we, we thought we were going to go.' And and I, I like seeing David wanting to go. Amen. I, I'm just saying now, and the multitudes, they're fainting, and you're you're their only hope. I drive every single day around this neighborhood and see Jehovah's Witnesses at the doors lying to people. Just flat out lying. It's a lie. It ain't yeah. even close to the truth. It's a cult and it's devilish. That's right. And then we we're not we're not we're not doing anything. You know, and we got to and and look, I understand working different things. You want to go soul winner another time? Call me another Paul. We'll find a time to go with you. You ought to be a soul winner. They saw the crowd's fate and religion had them. Let me say this. They weren't spiritually satisfied and they were dead to God. Sin weighed them down. Listen to me. They weren't taught the truth. I wrote that down. Uh, uh, but they were taught what the world believes. Now listen to me. Those folks out there acting just like they're supposed to act. 
But we've been taught the truth. And, and this may not be the greatest church in the whole world. Don't get me wrong. I think it is. But this church gets truth. Amen. And doesn't get a bunch of ear tickling and a bunch of nonsense. And I thank God for the strong Christians in this room that hadn't quit on God because their pastor told them like it was. Because we need that. Amen. And, and in the South, they just go somewhere else. Those people were dead in their sins. And Jesus says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That means he'll save them. But it says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest in your souls. That means after you get saved, you can get rest in your souls, your mind. God can minister to you and help you. He says, come unto me. Well, Jesus is not here anymore, and it's all up to us. And they're faint. We ought to pray about that. We ought to pray, God, let me see people like you see them. Help me to get off my blessed assurance and do something for you, Lord. Help me to get there. The crowds fainted. Number two, we're, we're about done. Jesus saw the crowds were scattered. That's what it says. I mean, it's easy. They were scattered abroad. They wandered about. They didn't know which direction to go. Thousands of them. Matthew and, and Mark and, uh, and, and, and are, are all the disciples that were with him, man, they come up on that mountain. Oh, we got to get some rest. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. And then all of a sudden he sees them all and says, you know what? We can't rest, God. They're all scattered. They're everywhere. What are we going to do? And we need to realize that was Jesus' heartbeat. They stopped and they were trying to find something to satisfy them and they couldn't find it. Now, I never was satisfied until I found Jesus. Why wouldn't I want someone else to be satisfied? They were without meaning, without significance. Remember that life? No. Many turned to religion. Let me give you a definition of religion. A pursuit or interest to which someone ascribes supreme importance. A pursuit or interest of which someone says it's supremely important to. Not just church, the world has its own religion. Folks, listen to me, we're in a mess, and if you don't know it, the gorilla should have been blown to smithereens. They should have hit that thing with a rocket for that little baby. And you got people on the news acting so stupid for a gorilla. You know, Romans chapter 1 says they'll worship the creature more than the creator. I mean, that's the world we're living in. You know what that is? Those are lost people. Yeah. I, you, you tell me you're saved and you're worried about that gorilla, I will smack you and say, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm not even thinking about my kids being down there with the gorilla. You wouldn't have had to wait for them to shoot the gorilla if I fell in there. <laughs> There'd been no problem. I'd have came home, got the deer rifle, and I'd have shot that thing until he just did. I'd have killed every gorilla. <laughs> I, I'm just telling you, that's the world we live in, man. They're scattered around with all these things, looking for stuff and trying to figure stuff out, and it's messed up. Because they have humanism philosophies. If it feels good, do it. Let's do it this way more. There are these rallies now. Uh, you know, I, I, I mean, it's just so sick that people want everything for you. Don't want to do nothing. I'm talking to a bunch of people that work, and I know you work. I mean, come on. Uh, the world's messed up. It's because they're scattered abroad. Jesus saw them all scattered. They needed something. Jesus in John chapter number 10. Don't turn there. He says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. He was talking to the Pharisees. They were arguing with him. And he says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. And at the end of John chapter number 10, or right in the middle of it somewhere, some of the Pharisees said, man, he's the devil. And then some of them say, oh, wait a minute. I've never seen the devil heal people and do the things this man is doing. So they got split there. Devil, and some people believe. And that's the way it's going to be out there. Some people are going to believe, and some people are going to say it's not true. But we've got to find the ones that are scattered abroad. 
and they're fainting. And, and God died for them. And He chose the church, folks. He chose, we, folks, I don't know if you understand this, but I want you to understand it tonight. This is the greatest thing going anywhere in the world right now at 7.15, 8.15 on Thursday night in the world. It's called Real Deal Church. Amen. Talking about real deal lives that need God. Amen. Carlos, uh, 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 Travis, we don't need to build anything more than we need to build the kingdom of God. Uh, he told me we don't need to tell nothing more than we need the kingdom of God. We don't need to deliver no medication. We don't need a bank. We don't need uh, Rite Aid. We don't need the lawyers. We don't need uh, to take care of anybody. We don't need ShopRite. I mean, we need Jesus' work to go on. And it's going to take prayer because I don't know what else it can take. I get up till I'm blue in the face, shout at everybody, give you the Bible, say, Thus saith the Lord, God wants to do something. And, and, and the same people show up. The same 15 to 20 people show up every time to go to a winning. Jessica's wrecked every week because she can't bring the ghost soul with it. She's got the little ones and they may be in a stretch. She begs me to bring them, begs to do it. And I said, Jessica, just wait till you get a little bit older. And I'm not lifting her up, but man, she's heartbroken about it. And I'm just telling her, I don't know what else to say besides we just make it a prayer meeting tonight. Pray that the Lord of the harvest send forth laborers and they'd be us. We start praying for that. God sent somebody to Philly. Well, God sent me. And, and, and that's to me, I mean, you know, uh, I couldn't have figured out anywhere to go. But God said, go here. And, and folks, this to me. I, I don't want to make this sound so bad. And I'm not trying to lift me up. I'm not trying to do that. But eight years ago, this right here was so far from my mind, it would be the last place in the world I would move to. There ain't nothing, nothing out there that attracts me to anything in this nasty hellhole. But my heart got measured up to her, got surrendered to the Lord, and I said, Lord, I'll go wherever you want, because I just want to be with you. And it took prayer to do that. I had to surrender to do that, man. That wasn't a quick thing at that little Northeast Vision message that Brother Char Char Charlie preached. I was on the floor for 45 minutes crying profusively, wanting to hold on to the South. And God says, you got to go to the Northeast part. And I just gave up. It wasn't an easy decision down there in Maryland when I got on my face about this neighborhood and sat there for 45 minutes on the floor. This little 10 second come down and, and do a T-bone move at the altar, man, that did not how it worked for me. God says, man, they're scattered abroad, they're fainting. And then he says, I've come they might have life, and they might have it more abundantly. That's why he came. That they can have life. And we're the only life givers on the earth right now. And then from number three, Jesus saw the crowds as a sheep without a shepherd. A sheep without a shepherd. That, that's just right there in the passage. Ain't nothing coming tricky out of this. We can literate nothing. You know what? They don't have, first of all, they don't have God to lead them. They don't have God to love them. They don't have God to listen to them. They don't have a pastor to lead them, to love them or listen to them. And and you know, and I already know everybody here. We're, 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 I know we're all close. I know you guys love me. I know I get on your nerves sometimes. That's okay. I, I'm going to do that the rest of your life. It's okay with the truth. Uh, but but uh, they need it too. And Jesus chose us. And it's not just soul winning. It's called being faithful to God's work in his life. And, and that's going to take prayer. That's the only thing I can figure out about Paul. Because it is a decision. He could not make a decision for the Lord or make a vow to God. God, I vow a vow. And God, why don't you just kill me if I don't do it and get serious with God? God, I mean, you'd be pretty serious if you told God to kill you. I'm not telling you to come down here and tell God to kill you. But I'm saying Jehovah's Witnesses are doing it because they're a bunch of fakes and they think they're going to go to heaven if they knock doors. We're going to heaven and they ain't doing nothing. As a conglomerate. 
as a as a everybody that's on the list of the, the members and all that as a whole, we're doing pretty good. And now listen to me. I'm not knocking anybody. This church is a fabulous church. And it's a hard working church. So don't anybody get discouraged. But are we doing everything we can do and more? Because that's where we always need to be headed. We don't need to measure ourselves against what other churches do. Because if we do that, we're doing pretty good. The measure of stick is what Jesus says. They've got no shepherd. They've got nobody to lead them. They've got a bunch of fakes and phonies out there. Tell them those kids in that court. Man, they're, they're struggling. I'm excited about the summer, taking David and, uh, and Sincere and Dominic and you know, both Paul and getting on the basketball court and uh, and beating those kids out there and trying to talk to them about Jesus while they, whatever they, I know they're going to get high, I know they're going to cuss, I know all that's going to happen, but you know what, i got to get in there and reach them somehow. I don't know what else to do, they're not just going to come. Yeah. And they need someone to love them and send someone to push them around, I knock a few of them down just to feel good about it on the court. And they say, oh, sorry, not that buddy. Okay. Hey, hey, I'm just telling you. God says they got no no shep no shepherd, man. They're walking around. Now I'm done. And I know I'm saying that we're still gonna pray. Brother Weedo sat right there with me and Brother Cordell and Kara and Dale in that church van from Aberdeen, Maryland. And September 808 or something. Yeah. September 2008. We pulled up to this neighborhood. Brother Pinchetti had already showed me this. And me and Brother Paul looked at it and said, there ain't no way we'd move here. No way. We sat out there. Brother Weedo, we brought him to Philly. And we went and got a cheesesteak at Steve's. And, man, we, he said, Bert, why don't you take and show me that little, that bill that Brother Pinchetti told you about. I said, all right, we go over there and look at it. It's fine. And Brother Corbin drove us home. We sat right there on boat or not. And Brother Weedo looked around and started crying. I said, Bird, this is beautiful. And I thought, look. And he said, there's sheep and no shepherd. Is that close, right, Brother Corbin? There's sheep and no shepherd. And I thought, I, I, I mean, I trust him just like God speaking to me. And, you know, it hadn't been hard for me. I mean, we've been through some stuff and go through things and all that, but it, it's been a great life being in the will of God, surrendered to what he wants, working. Yeah. When we get tired, I'm tired all the time. I'm that guy, I'm tired. But, I, but I'll have no problem, since here, I'll have no problem going home, turning that TV on at 9 o'clock and staying up to the very last of asking. But then, when it's time for bus me, where are we going to be? Because the world's religion is more important than what God is. I'm glad. I used to say this years ago, I, I hope that, and, and I'm not knocking nobody here because everybody's here tonight, right on time and all that, and we got kids. But you guys know the time I got the pulpit and said, if you're late to church, you're a loser. I just said that, man. I made every Leo mad. Everybody got mad at that. I got up and said, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Hey, I've, I've asked many of you, because you're, you're here on time now. I said, do, you go, do you go to work late like you come to church late? <laughs> and you know what the answer is? For the most part. That's why it's, that's interesting. We give everything else first place, but not God first place. And we have to give God first place too. Maybe you need to pray with somebody. Maybe you need to pray by yourself. I need to pray by myself. My kids want to go through that time, but I need to pray. Because I'm not right with the Lord at this point. I feel like that 100%. Not to make you feel anything. I don't really care. I, I, I air my laundry. I'll do it the rest of my life. It'll be fine. But I need to pray that that becomes more of a consuming passion for me like it was for Jesus. And then when I see people, I weep over because God would like that if we did that. And then we need to pray for the Lord of the harvest to send forth laborers. And guys, make sure when you pray that, you pray that honestly because God's going to send forth us first. And then He's going to bring people in here, man. I believe that. And this church is going to grow and we're going to branch out and it's going to be an awesome life. And it's been the best seven years of my life is here. 
and I've been to the top of the Eiffel Tower, the Empire State Building, the beaches of Florida, California, Spain. I mean, anywhere you can think of that would be cool, I've been there. Just about. And nothing compares to the hellhole where God put me and the will of God was to my life and how great it is. But that's because God said we need somebody to go. And I'm no hero, but nobody else has seen to come. We did find a guy on the internet last night that said he was called to fill it. I, I, I don't know him or anything. And I thought, well, then I'd be an answer to prayer. I need you guys to come to the city. We need to start getting some churches going. We need God to get some buildings, and we need to get to just blow in. And, and so, but most important for us, we need to really win this neighborhood to Christ. Are you there for the Lord of the harvest? They're for the laborers. The only thing you can do at this point right now is you can either come down and get right with the Lord. And I'm not saying everybody's wrong. I'm saying we've all got something to do for the Lord right now. God wouldn't have had you here tonight. And if you're having problems with family or folks or wives or husbands, get that right. Get to the Lord and say, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And God wants you to be faithful. And God wants to win the world to Christ that he's going to use the church. I mean, that's all he's going to use. Nobody else is coming. And I believe we can do it. But it's us together. I cannot do it by myself. God is going to send forth people. And you're it. And what a blessing to have all of us together. And I would not choose anybody over you to be here tonight and the people that are here in this room. Let's pray. Uh, and, and let's get a hold of the Lord. I'll close this out here in just about 10 or 15 minutes. But get a hold of the Lord. Weep over it. Think about it. Get God in it. Please don't sit there and talk. Leave and go to the hallway or go home if you have to talk. We want to have a prayer meeting in here. Okay, not being mean with you. If you have to leave, it's okay. If you prayed all you can pray and you got to go, really not mad at you. And I promise you, I'm not lying about that bit. But we don't want to sit in here and talk. We want to pray. You run out of things to pray about, come up to me. I'll pray with you. Well, Paul pray with you. My kids will pray. Brother, we'll pray. Let's pray. All right, let's get over.